In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our NetBoot image and the Net Install service. I'm going to use Client 2 in order to demonstrate this, but we need to finish up on our Rock 1 server. Here we have the tail end of the system image utility process to create the NetBoot image. We're done, so I'm going to click on Done. And then I'm going to quit out of system image utility. And we need to start the Net Install process. So I'm going to turn that on. And let's just double check our images. And yes, we do have the image. It's a red dot, which means it's not configured yet. Highlight it and choose the Edit Image Settings from the Action gear below. Now we need to make this available, and we get a choice of two protocols, HTTP or NFS. It defaults to HTTP, but most people traditionally will use NFS. We can also restrict the image to certain Mac models if we wanted to. I'm not going to filter at this time, but we could. And we could restrict access by MAC address. So we have several different places to create restrictions for this image. We also can make it available for something called diskless booting. This is where you really could use your Mac without a hard drive inside. However, most of the time it's used when you have utilities and other sorts of troubleshooting tools on a NetBoot image and you want to operate on the internal drive of your Mac and you want to do it from the NetBoot image. So we're done here. Now we can enable or turn on the NetInstall service. When the settings have been completely written out to the server, we can go up to the on off switch and click on it to turn it on and we can watch our connections if we want to. So at this point, we're done with this external drive, so we can drag it to the eject icon, and we can switch back over to our client to computer. Here, we need to go into system preferences, and go to startup disk, and this time, we're not concerned with target disk mode, we want to choose the netboot image from the list of startup volumes. And note the name is the name that I gave it before with the NB abbreviation for netboot, model, and then the serial number that we generated with the checksum. So we're going to go ahead and click on restart. And we're going to lose visibility of this computer for a little while. Okay, our Client 2 computer has completely rebooted and it is now named netboot001. We can see that down here. Let's go ahead and go into it and we can log in as the administrator. Here we have the iMac model system information report that we created and left on the desktop. Here is the current internal drive of this computer. And at the top, we have the network attached NetBoot system image. And it is named as I named it before with the model name and serial number. So that's how your NetBoot system works. The really nice thing is that your users can go into here if they want to and quite literally, any changes they make are only fleeting and temporary because this image is a read-only image. So they could go in here and delete a file. And the next time that this computer is restarted and netbooted, that file will apparently magically reappear there. Let's double check to see if our application came over into Applications and see if we have the Flip for Mac installed. There it is. We can also check to see if the System Preferences has the System Preference for it, and it does. And remember, this is all on Client 2 where we never installed these. It's just that the NetBoot image has those applications installed, and so we get the benefit of it because we're booting from that image. We're going to see now how you can also do Net Installs and Net Restores in the next couple of lessons.